Hey guys, let's move to the endotracheal tubes now. We've got two types of endotracheal tubes, the red rubber tube and the PVC tube. So this is the list of differences between both of them. We know that the red rubber tube is uh, expensive and PVC the cheap one. So the red rubber tube is reusable and expensive. PVC is disposable and cheap. Okay, now I'll just uh, keep on speaking. You see the differences, which one belongs belongs to which one. Now, higher tendency to kink. It has a lower tendency. Murphy sign is absent. The Murphy sign is present over there. The cuff has a low volume and high pressure. It is a high volume and low pressure. There is increased chances of tracheal injury because of high pressure. Okay, uh, because of high pressure cuff. There is decreased chances of tracheal injury. Used for short duration of time because high duration might lead to tracheal injury and uh, if we have to do surgery for long duration we use the PVC tube uh, red rubber tube is non-transparent and it's radiolucent and uh, over there we have got the transparent and the red uh, and radiopaque PVC tube here it has low incidence of sore throat and high incidence of sore throat in case of PVC tube Fogging is a sign of endotracheal intubation. So whenever intubation has been done, whenever we have done the uh, tracheal intubation, fogging is seen in the tube. So that is a sign of tracheal intubation. Here we can see the sign for the gem stationery where I got the notes from. Okay, Gotham Nagar. We have got the mobile number as well. If you want to get the notes, you can order them from the number given below. Okay, now the most common size of ED uh, used for adult male, the endotracheal tube used for ad adult male is 8 and 8.5 millimeters. And remember, this is the internal diameter, it does not include the external surface, it's the internal diameter. F in case of adult female, it will be 7.5 to 8. Okay, now length of tube at the upper incisors males it has to be 21 to 22 centimeters and females it is 20 to 21 centimeters okay so the size of pt used for adult male is 8 to 8.5 millimeters we're talking about the internal diameter and length of the tube at upper incisors has to be 21 to 22 centimeters that means calculated from the upper incisors it has to be 21 to 22 centimeters in case of males and 20 to 21 centimeters in case of females okay now so whenever we say size of the tube that means the diameter very important okay it does not mean the length of the tube now cuff of tube should uh, should lie in mid trachea 2 to 2.5 centimeters below the vocal cords okay so cuff of tube should lie in the mid trachea below the vocal cords how much below 2 to 2.5 centimeters below the vocal cords okay so whenever you cross the vocal cords you feel some sort of resistance that means you have reached the vocal cords and then you have to just uh, you know push it to 2 to 2.5 centimeters below the vocal cords now cuff should be palpable in the suprasternal notch so you should be able to palpate the so what we do is we uh, through the supra uh, through the suprasternal notch we can palpate the cuff it should be palpable cuff pressure should never exceed 30 centimeters of water okay preferably we should use 25 centimeters okay now you can see the conversion over here so 1 centimeters is equal to 0.7 millimeters hg so how much so we've got 30 centimeters that means around 21 mm hg of okay mm hg the confirmation of the endo endotracheal in, uh, intubation how do we confirm that we have we have done the intubation so first of all there should be rise and fall of chest wall with each um, uh, uh, artificial technique that we are using so there should be rise and fall of chest wall second thing is that we should be able to see the fogging of the tube as I said earlier okay we can also confirm by using chest x-ray we can do auscultation okay so uh, we can auscultate on the be on the left base of the lung okay Capnography, fastest and best chest. So as we know, cap, cap, uh, 
Kaplow stands for CO2. So capnography is the fastest and the best test to confirm the endotracheal intubation. So if the exhaled CO2 is around 30, 35 to 45 mg, that means intubation has taken place. Now this is a, a diagram shown. We can see that the baseline over here and there's the expiratory plateau and we've got the inspiratory downstroke. So if this graph is seen, that means if from the baseline with the expiratory upstroke, if it reaches the expiratory plat plateau like this and with the downstroke, inspiratory downstroke is seen, that is normal, right? In case of a flat capnogram, that means in case of cardiac arrest, you won't be able to see this regular graph. Instead, you'll just see one uh, expiratory upstroke and the inspiratory downstroke only. This is called as a flat capnogram. This is seen in case of cardiac arrest in esophageal intubation. So whenever we have we have intubated esophagus first, we can we can intubate esophagus. So initially, when an intern does endotracheal intubation, uh, so he does not really know how to you know sometimes it happens you know people make mistakes. So initially, we can make mistake and we can intubate the esophagus. That can lead to a flat capnogram. So that is why we do capnography. This is the fastest and the best test. So what we see is that a flat capnogram is seen. So we'll stop the intubation immediately. Okay. And we'll re-perform the procedure. Okay. A flat capnogram is seen in case of cardiac arrest. In case of esophageal intubation, which is very common. Okay. With amateurs. Disconnection of, cir disconnection of circuit. If you have disconnected the circuit. In case of ventilatory failure. Okay. So these are the four causes where a flat capnogram is seen. Now, if this sudden fall in ET in endotracheal carbon dioxide. Okay. This shows venous air embolism. Okay. That means there is embolism in case in the veins. Okay. Now, most commonly seen in case of posterior fossa surgery in sitting position. Okay. So whenever there is a posterior fossa surgery, okay, that can lead to venous air embolism. So there'll be sudden fall in the endotracheal carbon dioxide okay most sensitive to detect to detect venous air embolism in transesophageal echo okay so the most sensitive test to, de to detect any sort of uh, venous air embolism is the transesophageal echo so we can go for the transesophageal echo and we can see if there is any venous air embolism okay so sudden fall in carbon dioxide as soon as we see any any sudden fall in carbon dioxide what we do is we go for the transesophageal echo and we can see if there is any embolism over there okay the most common complication of sitting position surgery is hypotension so whenever we, we have to do any sitting position surgery there can be partial hypotension so that we have to be very well aware of right if there is sudden rise in the ET carbon dioxide what can be the reasons for that most important sudden rise in the ET CO2 can be malignant hyperthermia okay so there is the earliest sign is the rise in endotracheal carbon dioxide. So the malignant hyperthermia, malignant hyperthermia is the earliest sign in the rise of, is the rise in endotracheal carbon dioxide. Now, if we see a steep plateau like this, so generally we have got a flat plateau, I mean like with the, with the expiratory upstroke, we see a flat plateau, right? So if we have got a steep plateau, that means there is bronchospasm, right? That, that means bronchospasm, so you can see, how important a capnogram can be, right? Now, into endobronchial intubation, when we're doing the endobronchial intubation, okay, this is how we see an endobronchial intubation. This is the graph. So this over here, the fifth one, as in the in the part where I'm touching, this part over here shows the endobronchial endobronchial intubation. Requirement of muscle relaxation. So whenever the graph comes like this. That means muscle relaxation is needed. So then we give MRs to the patient. Okay. Now coming on to the special endotracheal tubes. We can go for the right angled endotracheal tubes. Over here we can see. So this is not the normal one. Right. So this is used for cleft lip or cleft palate surgery. So whenever a patient has cleft palate or cleft lip, in these surgeries we can't use a normal endotracheal tube. So we have to use a right angled endotracheal tubes for the cleft lip and the cleft palate surgery. Okay. Flexometallic armored spiral tube, spiral embedded tubes. 
okay so flexo metallic we have talked about it in the LMAs as well okay so in the laryngeal mask airways airway we had flexo metallic uh, part as well right here in the endotracheal tube as well we've got the flexo metallic type so this is the armor type okay spiral embedded tube it contains metallic spiral rings and this because of the armor it doesn't kink okay if I remember we, rem we also talked about it that the red rubber tube has the tendency to kink okay so the flexo metallic or the armor tube does not kink it is used for head and the neck surgeries used for surgery in the prone position when the person is lying in the prone position this is used in those surgeries only and used for spinal surgeries okay so it's used for metallic spinal rings I mean it has a metallic spinal rings uh, around it and does not kink used in head and neck surgeries spinal surgeries and surgeries in the prone position then we've got the third type we've got the micro laryngeal tube micro because it is narrow okay it is long and narrow this is used for surgery on larynx as the name suggests okay Cole's tube we have got the diagram as well it has got a broad proximal and the narrow distal part okay this is used in children as a subglottis is narrow in them so in children the subglottis is narrow so we have we want a narrow distal part okay so we use the Cole's tube in the in the uh, in children basically because they have got a narrow subglottis okay Cole's tube okay so because people because children that's a mnemonic I've got for you so uh, children watch Nickelodeon right so Nicole I think uh, it's pretty good pretty good right so, okay now we've got a Robert Shaw and Carlin's double lumen tube okay this is pretty interesting and tough to remember Robert Shaw and Carlin's double lumen tube okay used for cardiothoracic surgeries lung surgery bronchial surgeries and esophagoscopy I guess okay so so this is esophagometry I guess so <coughs> the Robert Shaw and uh, Carlin's double lumen tube okay Robert Shaw and Carlin's double lumen tube it is used for cardiothoracic surgery lung surgery bronchial surgery and the esophagometry used for single lung ventilation if you want to ventilate only a single lung not the other one you can go for this one and contains two cuffs one is a tracheal cuff other one is the endobronchial cuff so it has got two cuffs okay the tracheal cuff and the endobronchial cuff it is used for single lung ventilation but it's got two cuffs and is used for the cardiothoracic surgery bronchial surgery and the lung surgery and the esophagometry okay we can just mark it up all double lumen tubes are left sided as left bronchus is longer okay so like we've got this one we've got the Carlin's double lumen tube so all the double lumen tubes are left sided okay as the left bronchus is longer okay so we, we tend to go towards the left side so the double lumen tubes they are left sided the final position of double lumen tube is confirmed by fiber optic bronchoscopy so what we do is we use a fiber optic bronchoscopy okay we go over there and we look at the position of the uh, of the double lumen tubes because the double lumen tubes they should be on the left side okay most common cause of hypoxia during one lung ventilation is increased shunt fraction okay so okay so this there's a question that we have in the box the most common cause of hypoxia with single lumen most common cause of hypoxia with single lumen is mismatch okay this is the mismatch okay okay this is a pretty cool question I guess so um, the most common cause of hypoxia during one lung ventilation is increased shunt fraction okay during one lung so that is double lumen right in case of single lumen the most common cause of hypoxia is mismatch so that is the difference increased shunt fraction is the cause of hypoxia during one lung ventilation increased shunt fraction and mismatch is the cause in case of single lumen ventilation okay now previously malposition of tube was the most common cause now it is second most common cause okay so earlier now people have uh, you know uh, better teachers I guess or uh, better techniques you know to learn so malpositioning of the tube is the second most common cause now the most common cause being the increased shunt fraction okay now as I told you there's a different 
you know, if we use different sizes in case of uh, in case of children, okay, we even talked about the different type of uh, tube that is a cold tube in children, as a subglottis is, uh, is narrow in them. So endotracheal tubes in children, uncuffed tubes are used up to six years, okay. So we don't use cuff up to six up to six years. I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry for this. Okay, so uncuffed tubes are used up to six years. In children, a minimal permissible leak is allowed. Okay. So, flow rate is proportional to the flow rate is proportional to the is a proportional to the radius to the power four. Okay. If size of the tube is tight, okay, that means if the R if the radius is decreased by half, the flow rate is decreased by one by sixteenth. That is the uh, that is how it works. So larger the radius more would be the flow rate okay so if the leak is very high replace with bigger size tube so i hope you get the meaning of this thing so what we're trying to do is that in children a minimal possible leak is allowed that means there should be less of the leak leakage should be minimal okay as we know the flow rate is proportional to the radius okay so more the radius more would be the flow rate so if we have very high leak which is not permissible okay we don't allow too much of the leakage in children so we have to replace it with bigger size tubes we have to replace it with a bigger size tube okay so bigger size tube that means more of the, more would be the radius more would be the flow rate okay so we would decrease the leakage by this way now how do we calculate the tube size in children so the tube size is very important and as i've already told you that tube size means the diameter okay so preterm babies that would be gestational age by 10 okay so for example if they were born in like 30 30 uh, three weeks or say so the size would be 3.3 .3 millimeters okay in children with one to six months it should be 3 to 3.5 millimeters in 6 to 12 it should be 3.4 to 4 millimeters and then one to six years the formula is age by 3 plus 3.5 so for example if the age of the child is like eight years or nine years for say for easy calculation it will be 3 plus 3.5 that is equal to 6.5 okay so it will be age divided by 3 plus 3.5 that is a formula okay and if it's 6 to 12 years okay that is and that will be age by 4 so for example if the child is 12 years old so it will be 12 by 4 that is equal to okay so one i'm really sorry for that if the age of is is 1 to 6 it will be 6 by 3 it can't exceed 6 okay so it will be 6 by 3 plus 3.5 that will equal 5.5 I I give an example of nine that was not correct in this in this case. So uh, when we have six to twelve, okay. So let me take for example twelve. So twelve by four that is equal to three plus four point five. So we have to add four point five to it, okay. So this is a pretty easy calculation. But again, it's one to six, okay. And then we've got six to twelve, okay. I'm really sorry for the mistake. Now, how do we calculate the length? As I've said that we have got different length as well, right? So it is internal diameter into three minus one so for example if the internal diameter is is for say six okay so if it is six it will be six into three that is equal to 18 minus one is 17 17 millimeters right so that is the length okay okay so um the nasotracheal intubation will be done in the next video i think it has uh, already been more than 10 sec okay it's around 20 minutes we have done today okay so we'll discuss the next topic uh, in the next video thanks a lot for bearing with me